Happy Monday, everybody. Yo! Hello. So, uh, just before we went live, to anybody who is fast on the trigger and is already here with us live, uh, we were talking about how um, on Twitter, I, you know, it's been it's been easy to just keep my mouth shut because it's hard to go for a particular brand of mischievous joy in a world where there's a lot of legitimate reasons to be upset. But but today I started just saying, hey man, no no snark, no coy boohoo answers. Like legitimately, everybody tell me, and I'm just gonna start retweeting like crazy, everybody tell me something genuinely good that has happened to you during 2020 and, and what it is. And I, you know, I'll go first. I, I love that I spent more time with my kids and I love that this ragamuffin came into my life and uh, posted a picture of a puppy. By the way, that's that's Twitter uh, uh, crack right there. Post a picture of a puppy. Uh, and then um, uh, it's been really, really heartening to see so many people, like nobody was a bad faith player so far. Nobody has say like, the best thing is that the orange Cheeto man is going away this year to vote thing tomorrow. Um, or today, I don't even know. Uh, but it's tomorrow. But but it's been uh, it's, it's, it's it's been really really delightful to see so many people share everything from kids being born to getting married to buying their first house to I mean it's like a lot of things happen during this year and and I kind of dig uh, you know saying hey for one second can we all just think of one good thing that's happened? Cool. That's a one out of three opinion from Brian <laughs> Brushwood. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think you should share good stuff, Brian. I'm no, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, speaking of which, um, man, you named the time, Andrew, and I would love to just do a video call and just play with that thing that we were talking about just, just playing with, because I would love, I, I feel intimidated that I don't know enough. <laughs> my, my dumb... My dumb, poorly trained comedy instincts. I, just I know. Want to it's like that thing is my wiener. I know. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, and well, yes, the open AI's GPT-3 in the playground. Yeah, I can, I can say it at least. That's all I can do. I can't take that. What? No. no. Oh, never mind. Our wieners. <laughs> Definitely our wieners. got to be the wieners, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, I just, I just got to put, speaking of the thing, I just got a yeah, poster thing here. Yeah. Uh, hello, I have a everybody. job, guys. Bryce, you wouldn't know what it's like to have oh, a job with yeah. responsibilities and a schedule. Speaking of which, I'm I'm kind of glad that Justin casually was like, hey, is it okay if, you know, I sit this one out? Because I kind of have a bit of work to do before tomorrow. Because I'm like... Yeah, I'm screw glad, that guy. I'm glad you said that. Because I definitely, this week, was going to say, hey, we're kind of starting a production pod of, of, of Modern Rogue stuff. So maybe, maybe fewer happy hours. Uh, we'll take a couple of days off from that. Oh, uh, which days? I'm sure uh, a few of us need to know what those days might be. Uh, oh, I, what I was imagining, I mean, we don't do one on Tuesdays. Right. So and we are going to do one today. So I was thinking like, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, and then and then uh, Friday, maybe. I don't know. We'll are see. you going to do one this Wednesday? Because that's because Night Attack is on Wednesday this week. Oh, that's right. Uh, wait, wait, no. It's just Thursday, Fridays? Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm gonna guess. There's no way Justin, you guys are gonna do a happy hour tomorrow. Right. That's exactly. not happening. And then we're also not gonna do one the day we have a night attack that evening. Right. So Tuesday and Wednesday are out. So I'll I'll just ask for also Thursday off, and then that way that's shootable. And then Friday we'll have a better sense of production schedule as we get closer to that. You should just take it off for two weeks. I agree. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, just because it, it always gets... Slow walk. I'm slow walking. Yeah. Uh, all right. Hello, everybody. We're going to get started here. But also, but also like, like, like Monday, it's not like we're shooting any kind of Mono Rogue stuff. So Monday, I can always do, right? And then Friday, yeah. we're usually kind of done, but I, I, I can't say that definitively. So mm. that's, that's sort of what I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh, hello, everybody. Is anybody watching us? Nope. No? Oh, weird. Uh, hello. Seven people. Seven people watching us. Hold on. Interesting, if true. Refreshing. Do we, oh, I don't have internet on this computer. That might be. 28. Wait, which one? On the center computer. When it, uh, it was out for a minute. Uh, okay, looks like it's back. Hello, everybody. If you would like. 
there we go okay just like with the chat the chat was not updating because there was no internet and there was a raid oh there you go Sorry. there's justin's there we go justin's chat chat folk hey everybody thank you for joining Beauty, us yay. uh perfect time we're just about to start weird things here in just a second uh this is a science podcast and uh, you're about to watch it normally justin's on it but not this week science as told by guys who sat in the back of the class and said maybe we'll just do this in summer school and blow off the rest of the school year <laughs> i'm sorry is that was there a problem with that one That's i was a... waiting for the part that doesn't sound awesome <laughs> <laughs> no uh, i did summer school for math once best thing i ever did well, here, like uh, met this really cute girl it's great if you're saying you're going to go take a break, go do it right now. Okay, great. Go right now. Yep. Go, 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 go. Uh, I took, uh, I took, what, what did I take summer school for? I did take summer school once for, was it math? No, it couldn't have been math. I was okay in math. It was math. I, well, my problem was like, I just didn't like do homework. And mm-hmm. if I had a class where I had to do homework, I'm like, I no. I do great in this one. No. Uh-uh. It's not not going to happen. Yeah. So that was in like, I did, look at me, I did summer school. Now I work in AI. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, I'm, I think I took that summer school class to get ahead. I think I did that so that I could cram some yes. subjects so I could move on to an advanced one or something. Yeah, uh, me too. <laughs> i did it because also like you could do like driver's ed in summer because like my dad like insisted my brother and i go like take take a driver's ed class because he didn't want to have to like you know yell at us about driving mm-hmm. and i remember one year i went to go do it and then uh, in summer school and and it's summer school kids and so but i remember there was like this really cute girl and all the guys were like oh we'll talk to her, whatever i'm like oh go talk to her go talk to her met her met a nice girl got her number and all that i'm like ah oh, she was embarrassed to be there like i was but you know <laughs> I'm like, this was really cool. It was a lot easier to talk to because, you know, summer school kids. <laughs> mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, was this middle school, high school? Uh, high school. High school. Ah, uh, the high school, summer school. Yeah, because I would do, I was in, I was in gifted classes, right? So I do gifted classes. So if I could get that easy extra, you get that extra point because it's gifted or honors. But mm-hmm. then if I had homework, my thing was like, Andrews does not do homework. I'm like, I just won't. That school day is done. Yeah, my project time. Home, homework, homework's a weird proposition, uh, especially now. I mean, God, you're at home already. But uh, uh, young bear, what is the biggest animal you guys you could re- you could take down? Your- Glad you asked that. Penguin I punched a tiger shark once. The same. I mean, did it take it down? Did you take it down, or did it did it did it? It, it off? ran away. <laughs> I mean, it kind of just kept going the way it was going to go. Mm-hmm. Just detour. You get a detour. That's a detour. It really was... didn't care or notice. <laughs> oh, uh, oh uh, don't let me forget, Bryce. Uh, I did watch My Octopus Teacher. Okay. Uh, like I don't know that. Wait, you're the yeah. one that introduced it to us on Cord Killers. Uh, the one Definitely. about the dude who finds the octopus and ta- and and goes there every day and one me was that it's, not you one me it's who it's, the... it's no my sexy squid substitute <sighs> teacher I don't know, maybe maybe it was a guest maybe a guest had it nah may, maybe what you did is you read a letter from somebody who recommended it I've never even heard of that oh really no yeah. uh, basically a dude in South Africa goes to this one part of a kelp forest finds an octopus keeps showing up every single day. Octopus eventually begins to trust him. They hang out a bit, and um, uh, he gets unique insights into life as an octopus. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Spoiler alert: uh, Octopuses Delicious. live one year. Really? Yeah. Oh, That's so, what I'm yeah. thinking about. Like, yeah, it must have been a short term. Yeah. Just, uh... just, just sort of guess how the movie goes, <laughs> knowing that this yeah. guy goes every day, and also octopuses live one year. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea about that. Uh, all right, you guys want to start some weird things? Yeah. Yep. All right, Andrew, I'm going to count you in in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello, beautiful people. Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello, everybody. And that's everybody that matters right now, because <laughs> other people think they have more important oh. things to do the day before the election. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And we're Justin Free this week. He's getting busy. He's got a lot of setup for so. Hi. Well, we will say actually, check out his content. What he's doing. If you're listening, I mean, you'll probably get this tomorrow or so if you're an early bird. But like, 
Check it out. Listen to Justin's podcast and stuff on politics. He is the smartest person I know and most well-balanced person I can think of when it comes to just talking about this stuff. Yeah. Yep. Justin R. Young on Twitch. So, yeah. Yeah. Good kid. Good kid. We should have him on here sometime. <laughs> so um, let's uh, start with Brian. You know, you're you're on the other side of the, I was about to call it the, the, the big C, but that's a totally different illness we never want you to get. Oh, the big um, C. Oh. <laughs> the little, little C, but that doesn't seem The most recent C, the uh, C 2020. Yeah. I guess it's 2019. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Not the, the not vid, really good at right? the like, I, Isn't that where we settled on is we're calling it the vid for short? The, v, the VD, like venereal disease? Okay, oh, go with that. Brian, uh, so you've had a... Num number 19, except it's 20, about to be 2021. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so you're, you know, you're like, I am legend, you know, you're Will Smith, you're immune. You can just walk around and stuff. I can rap. Like, I can dance. I'm, I'm very true, talented. I played true. the genie once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you've got, uh, you, they got to stuff. I would imagine a scenario. How about like, would you, would you like to take a walk through New York city? Like Will Smith and I am legend. Oh man. Uh, I mean, yes, ish. Uh, what it makes me think of is the production stories that I heard about 28 days later, uh, which, by the way, to anybody, you know, in our actual demographic was a movie that came out 20 years ago. Um, they, they, they needed to shoot somebody walking around London totally unoccupied, and they figured out that sunrise on a Sunday, you could pretty much do that for free. They just took some trash, threw it in the streets, and had them walk around and just no cars or people happen to come by. <laughs> so, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So imagine this. Bryce has got the camera. Yep. We're getting the shots of you in New York City, which, you know, parts of it are kind of, you know, not as lively. Yeah. Sound cool? Just a little stroll? Just stroll well, like pretend the city is yours? I mean, I mean, wait, wait. Are, 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 wait, wait. Sell me on the project that we're shooting. What are we, what are we going for here? I mean, you're the producer in this. Well, you know, you talked about, I think, one of our first episodes about one of the fantasies you've had if, like, uh, you were the last man in the world. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, like, no, I said, I said I want to win the game of life by being the last man on the world, and if that means I have to speed things up in order to achieve my life's goal, I was totally willing to do that. Okay, cool, cool. So, you're in New York City, let's say, we're just sort of giving kind of, like, we're making a movie about what this would be like, perhaps, or just, you're just taking a stroll. Would you like to take a stroll from New York, is what I'm asking? I mean... Yeah, especially I love I love going to places under unusual circumstances. I love it when it's mm -hmm. surreal and bizarre. That's part of the reason I loved going to Dragon Con is that it was like surrealist Burning Man in the middle of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So so like a reverse of that where it's like all of New York totally empty. Yes. Cool. Cool. Kind of a tragedy vampire. Got it. Yeah. So you're walking along. And I want you to imagine, and you know this is a scenario where something's going to go wrong, okay? Ah, you're walking I mean, it sounds the, to me like everything's going right. Uh, we're walking, you're walking through Bryce, the Bronx. Bryce, you got the camera, right? Got everything's the camera focused. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Light levels. Uh, I, I know all this production stuff. Uh, your f-stop is good. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, um, wait. Bryce, uh, you forgot to charge the camera. Bryce had to go, go, like, had to go leave. So now it's just you. Uh, that's, fine. that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I hold up my my fingers like in that stereotypical cinematographer's pose, you know, creating a 16 by 9 dynamic. Mm -hmm. By the way, do you think that we have 16 by 9 because our thumb to index finger ratio just happens to be that way? No. Next question. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> Man, I'm so glad the ghost of Andrew Maine is here to answer my question. For, for our ask, audio as listeners, I walk around. Brian is literally holding his fingers together like an old timey film director. Yes, exactly. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. No. Okay. I look good. This is the right, selfie so version. You're standing there, Brian. What is the worst thing that happened? I mean, if everybody's gone, what? A feral dog? Wait, maybe a cat could fall on me. Um, okay. Because fat, uh, fats, uh, cats fall from. Uh, uh, did, did we talk about this? That 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 there's a there's a, a a bad level of number of stories that cats can fall from, and and if or they it's, can't twist enough. Yeah, exactly. So it's like below. I think it's five to seven stories. They tend to be fine because they never speed up fast enough. But above thirteen stories. Uh, they have enough time to twist around and go into parachute formation. And because they're so light and they have so much skin, they slow down enough 
that that above 13 stories, they tend to land and maybe just fracture a paw or whatever. Somewhere um, in Russia is a scientist who hates cats well, in and, a tall and, building. And, 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 and by the way, how, yeah, how do you I find this I, I, out? Well, oh. uh, actuarial studies, you talk to veterinarians and, and one of the first questions they have, my this cat fell out a window and they're like, how high? And everybody knows how many floors it is. And it, oh. it, it turns out above 13. <laughs> he had a little bit of net bike. He wasn't that high. <laughs> As Mr. Miyagi said, cat fall above 13. 13th floor, okay. Below <laughs> fifth floor, okay. <laughs> Five to 13, sooner or later, just like cat falling from building. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, I so, remember that. That oh, was geez. the outtakes. Mm. So um, if let's say uh, somebody pops up and says, hey, Bri, f- big fan, what's the worst thing that you could happen to you right now in, in this moment? It'd be the worst. Standing alone in the middle of an empty New York City. I would say you are live streaming. That's the worst That's thing. That's the worst thing that would happen to you? Uh, wait, what am I doing in this scenario? You're just standing, you're standing there. around. You're just standing, just standing there. Okay, the worst thing that can happen to any uh, standing uh, person. Uh, Brian, you're waiting for a bus because Bryce took the car and he told you he's going to be running late. Okay. You're like, screw this. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, I would say the worst thing would be... Wait, why is the city abandoned? Not it, well, it's just there's a thing called COVID, Brian. I don't know if you know heard this. Okay, Everyone's a lot of people around. then I have nothing yeah. to worry about. I already got the COVID. Yeah, uh, sure. as the president says, I, I'm immune. The city's Question not mark. abandoned, it's just like it is right now. But you're in kind of by yourself, you're got waiting it. for a bus. What's got it. what? Give me a couple three, three worst things that could happen. Uh, okay, bad things. Uh, number mm-hmm. one, I'm about to be robbed, but uh, I've been working out, so I feel like I can run pretty good. Number two, they're about to wait, you've been working out. So you can run pretty good, not like you would try and take. I immediately thought you said, "Oh, because I'm going to take him." Oh, oh, good. Uh, no, 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 no. I know. <laughs> no, um, uh, again, unless we're live streaming, in which case I'm I will totally gonna... take him. I would <laughs> Throw rather my money die on the ground. live streaming than be caught running away on a live I'm gonna, stream. I, I'm gonna. There's no live stream. It's just you. I'm gonna throw my money on the ground. And then I'm going to ask for a selfie so I can save this moment, like my trip to New York and my mugging. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag first time and why. the camera. <laughs> yeah. Imagine a future, a crime-free future where like literally the muggers are like the, you know, the, the street entertainers, like in Hollywood Boulevard and stuff like, Hey, you want to get mugged? Oh yeah. Cool. All right, buddy. Give me a- <laughs> Take a photo oh, yeah. of me with oh, Robber. That's yeah. pretty good. Actually. I, I, I rather like that. Uh, it's 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 well i, I don't want to do spoilers uh but uh, uh okay. so bad things so, that, so, that can happen to you robin i'm worried about is i'm not worried about him being infected i am worried about being embarrassed but it sounds like that's not a problem yeah. uh it sounds like i don't have anything they would want um yeah i think i think i'm good i'm just like hey buddy what's up no other bad no, things what other bad other, things well, do you just think you happen? you're just yeah. standing there waiting for a bus what is the worst thing you could in your and you're the, and the thing in your head that you're worried about of like you know, oh, what could happen to me? What, like, no, I, I mean, I could, be, I could be kidnapped, thrown into a sack, taken over to, uh, uh, let's say, uh, Bulgaria, uh, Antarctica, and forced at gunpoint to engage in bestiality porn. Okay, no, I said the bad things. The oh, bad sorry, things. sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, so we got stick up, we've got a taken to situation. Yep, 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 yep. And and then um, in in sickness seems like it would be a big one, but but it sounds like that's not a problem in this scenario. Uh, oh oh um uh, oh my god! Is it a trainer who's trying to sign me up at their gym? Are they explaining to me just what a value I'm going to get? For unlimited access, yeah. not not twenty four seven three sixty five twenty four seven customer service, and they promise all of their equipment's going to work. Mm-hmm. Promotional and pricing never show up, and all of the bikes will be occupied. You could promise that. <laughs> So, Bryce, do you have anything? Would be you well, know I, where this is going? I, I know where this is going. It's okay. very funny because we're trying to set it Brian is, up. It's and, Planet and, Fitness. And I nailed time, it. I knew it. We're trying to set up a freaking singularity Planet thing, and everything is other. Other people seem to be the worst right. thing in New York. So it sounds like to Brian, Brushman. Brian, you're standing there, like man, this sidewalk feels a little loose. You fall through a sinkhole. Not on my list, for the record. Okay. Never occurred you fall to me. You through a sinkhole, 15 feet into a pit, and you hit hard, hard really, really hard. Oh, and one more thing. Rats. <laughs> so much to parse here. Oh, no. Debris still falling down and hitting you in the head. Um. Mm-mm. Okay, Mm-mm. but there's nobody from Planet Fitness around. <laughs> no, like, no Planet <laughs> I at Fitness. At least have that much going for me. <laughs> 
Um, oh my God. Uh, yeah, this I've heard, terrifying. I've heard that the rap problem in New York is particularly bad right now. Uh, didn't think it was sinkhole, like setting up spy versus spy traps bad. Uh, it happens big city. So this happened to Leonard shoulders, poor guy who basically might, might have known his own business. And, uh, it's a footage. We have video of this? We have surveillance oh footage of it. God. Oh my God. Whoa. There are like other people around oh. who saw him. He falls fifth into a 15 foot hole. Okay. And, and this is not in my mind. What I was picturing was like, um, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe 20 feet in each direction. Like everything falls down at once. This is a comical Bugs Bunny, Wile E. Coyote, exactly you sized hole that just pops open and leads you into a freaking, uh, uh, the third episode of, of, uh, the third and last, according to my Candon hmm. episode of Indiana Jones with all the, the, the rats. Yeah. And if there wasn't, because there's like, there's about 10 people or so around. It's kind of a busy, a busy time. If there wasn't anybody around. Also, look at the concern on all of those New Yorkers face. Yeah. It, no, people run. People, once they realize they turn around, look, which happens. Everybody's I mean, turned. At first guy they, comes they running thought it over. was a street performer. But, but yeah, if, no, if people, there was nobody around, you would not, you, you would be disappeared. That hole would disappear you. I mean, and then shortly after, the rats would disappear you. Oh, God. <laughs> he said he was afraid to scream because he didn't want the rats going into his mouth. No. Oh, that's only more terrible because I believe you. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah, this I'm going to is... write a direct invoice to uh, uh, Andrew Cuomo. Yeah. Like, I request $50. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, Leonard Shoulders, man, uh, dude. Uh, our sympathies, Rats. man. That is that is a hell of an experience. And yeah. um, you know. they got him out. By the way, he's can, he's yeah. fine. Can, can we talk? No, about, left him. Can we talk real quick about just urban living in general? Because because like uh, I I live vaguely in suburban country, right? Like like the property is I think you could say rural ish. You know, seven acres, one house. You know, um, then then our house is in a suburban neighborhood. Um, in the, in the property in HQ, we see a few of those, those big, uh, they're, they're outdoor cockroaches. They're, they're almost beetles really. Uh, but, but they wander inside and because we have pest control services, by the time they get inside, they're almost always ready to die. They're always like, kill me like the end of Cronenberg's to fly. Um, and then, but, but we never see any of that in, uh, our suburban house, um, from everything I've heard, urban life, downtown, uh, Manhattan, like that's just the world. Like, like uh, uh, you have roommates and they're either cockroaches or vermin of some variety. Um, have, have you guys had any moment? How, how are you with bugs and critters and the idea that you're constantly sharing space with them at all time? Because I, I take that back. We did have, we had two mice that made it into our suburban house and uh, I ordered two traps and I caught both of the mice and we never saw another mouse except for the third one that later I found desiccated and dead in a trap. Well, I mean, you're, there's spiders where you are. Like you've got like, Tons there are more spiders. spiders. Yeah. yeah, no, as yeah. you walk around, as a matter of fact, all summer long, it's it's as though every spider is is on an episode of an HGTV show called a, a Dream Plot, and every spider is sold the bill of goods that oh my gosh, look at this distance between these two trees. What a perfect place to put up a web. And then they spend all night putting up their web, and then they reveal at the end of each episode that a human gets up in the morning and knocks down all of the webs on the trail that they're building. So yeah, well, even I mean inside where you are, the building you're in right now, like they're. There are spiders. Oh, sure, it. sure. I'm cool with that. Uh, 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 David Rowan is not cool with that. I, I didn't know he had a spider thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, like in Florida, you know, palmetto bugs, cockroaches, you just, you got the, that all the time. And so you fumigate regularly and you keep, you know, you keep track of that. Um, you know, I'm in an old building here, really old building that's like 50 years old. So, you know. Have you seen any critters? They get like spider stuff. I get stuff that come like, where did that come from? You know, so. Yeah, I, yeah. I I don't get to you know they uh they I think they do a pretty good job of spraying at my apartment, uh as well as uh, I'm on a I'm on an upper floor which I think helps mitigate it a bit. So I'll see I'll see like wasps and stuff out on the balcony. I don't get too always drinking like Pinot Grigio. <laughs> That's right, uh, and 
So talking the, about saving their daughters from Nixium. <laughs> <laughs> the the worst I'll get the worst I'll get is like, uh, uh, like I had a cockroach once, and it was while there were other people I was hosting a get together, uh, and that that stunk. That stunk on ice. Um, or like uh, what little water bugs, the little silverfish that pop up out of the yeah. out of the pipes. Those flush down. They Wait, uh, sorry. Uh, what what pipes? The uh, like like the pooper pipes, like showers. Oh, or, or yeah, or the sink. You know, little water bugs. I think that's what they're called, right? No, it, or silverfish? Uh, Is it silverfish? Uh, oh, silverfish. Okay, for me, water bugs means um. I mean, there's, there, there's a type of critter that swims around in chlorinated pools that looks like a little beetle with 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 uh, flappy flappy doodles and swims around. Um, you might be. I don't know. You might be able to Google through that. Uh, silverfish. Uh. Yeah, I remember seeing those as kids in California, but but not so much in Texas. Yeah, I, I don't see them too much. I just see them come out of the shower or and like right. I guess something about turning do, do the water you see on just come out them. or like in my mind they're just around. And I guess and they're I, just I never around. See them come in, but they're always in the basin or they're in the tub, and so you can just flush them back. Yeah, where they were going. Uh, otherwise, not not too much of a problem. The, the wasps had been a problem, but that's more of a, a that was more of a hive situation than I don't know. Uh, Do, is there anything like like I was fairly impressed uh, for people who didn't see live? Like there was some moment, it, we've we have various team members who have, and I try to keep track of who's the most oogie about what critter. Uh, we have various team members that are oogie about different critters, um, and. Oh, I right. know one of our team members is very distressed and and not cool with with those outdoor like uh, two inch long, um, you know, flying cockroaches. Uh, that person doesn't really like bugs at all. Correct. Yeah. But particularly like even seeing dead ones is upsetting and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and there was a live broadcast that we were doing, and one of them was just hanging out on the ceiling directly above above Bryce. And I yeah. and I found myself like, hey, I'm not messing with you, but back away from the screen, look up and tell me how you want to proceed. Mm -hmm. And Bryce, to my surprise, was just like, he's like, okay, this is clearly a bit, backs up, looks up, and then it's just like, Sorry, what was the point of this? I'm like, it's directly above you. If it lets go, it's going to fall on your head. You, and Bryce was like, oh, yeah. and? Uh, so, it, so, and so, you know what's so weird? Is actually, I actually was just talking with someone I about that. Open my mouth to eat it? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I was, I was, it's so funny you bring that up because I was just talking about that exact moment with someone the other Bryce day. Bryce is like, you got $50? You want to see something you'll never believe? <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, the thing about that moment was like, we were here, which is like, my workplace i guess and yeah. this is like a kind of big open air sort of space so like it was up on the ceiling that it has an incentive to not fall down um but like similar like if i see a cockroach in in my apartment uh we are either mentally blocking that out or we are on the hunt to get to to yeah. neutralize like all, all to a permanent you're, you're, you're like taking the claw part of a hammer and digging back the drywall be like we will find them <laughs> i don't want to cut this conversation about <laughs> bugs too short but you know what we're bugged about oh <laughs> <laughs> wait hold our... on you you got to give up your your worst fear like like is there any do bugs bug you uh i mean the worst thing that i ever had happen was living in florida which is a jungle and going out there i had to like get rid of we had a bunch of like a big row of palm trees and i'm going through there chopping something and something hmm Brown and spiky fell on my arm and rolled all the way across my arm, and it just lit up in pain. It was the most painful things I ever saw. And my dad was like, oh, it's a saddleback or something or whatever. I couldn't remember what he said it was or whatever, but it was like for several days. And it was like it was like a poisonous caterpillar or yeah, something. Yeah, like, like one of those sucked. woolly bullies or whatever with the spines all over it. Ooh. Yeah, that sucked. Yeah, that sucked. That sounds like it sucks. Uh, but like, man. yeah, uh, you know what really sucks is what sucks? Is, is is having no patrons at <gasps> Patreon.com/slash Weird Things. No. 
Uh. That is what I was afraid the nightmare scenario was going to be, is that you were going to tell me I got to Manhattan, was walking around, and the reason that there was nobody there is because nobody was a patron over at patreon.com slash weird things. That, of course, is where you can support this show, keep us loud, live, and independent, giving you news of the weird, the paranormal, fringe technologies, and, of course, talking about SpaceX. Head on over to patreon.com slash weird things. Just a buck an episode, man. That's all we ask. We love hanging out with you. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Buy us, buy us a cup of coffee once per year. Not even a good cup of coffee, coffee like a Starbucks. Just mm -hmm. like split four ways. Um, yeah, like a Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, man, like, I'm yeah. going to start a war because I know some people are very passionate about where their <laughs> coffee comes from. <laughs> so, Brian, I want you to imagine, speaking of coffee, that we're out at sea, that you're in like, you know, like your sailor, like in some British sailing fleet. Now, is this okay. one the big sea? <laughs> Yes, yes, okay. Brian. I call it the Atlantic, but right. yeah. got it. <laughs> so you're in the big ocean, okay? And there's a, a flotilla, big fleet, right? And uh, uh, you show up to Chow, and and you're like, "Hey, what's what's for dinner?" And they're like, "Oh, shepherd's pie." You're like, "Ah, I hate shepherd's pie. I wanted bangers and mash." Like, "Oh, you know, they're having that over there. They're serving that on the, you know, the the." the jewel of Edinburgh, you know, the other ship over there mm. and just British naval history. I was like, about to say, oh, this, this sounds like a very Anglo-centric fleet that I'm in. <laughs> it's we're a British fleet. Bangers and mash, Shepherd's no, I said pie. it's a British fleet. Yeah, it's a British fleet. Oh, it is a British fleet. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good, yeah, yeah, good, yeah, good, yeah. good, good, good. And, and, and so you're like, oh, jolly not good. Um, uh, oh, good day, mate. <laughs> no, I, I'm boy. messing it all up. <laughs> Oh, I don't want to be it... bangers and mash. And they're like, oh, sorry, that's on that other boat. Oh, can you can you pull up next? No, oh, poor sailors at sea. We can't do that. That's ridiculous. Hard, it's hard to do a tuck and roll out on the sea. Are you about to yeah. tell me that somebody like just dove out and went swimming from boat to boat in the middle of a flotilla? Uh, in, 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 in a way, in, but these ships are hauling, by the way. These ships are moving, okay? Like... Abba, I get in me dinghy and me paddle it. Again, this is not a British accent, by the way. He's just kind of got problems. So, uh, yeah, no, no. If it was a British accent, what would it sound like? Remember, remember the James Bond movie where, like, he's on the sub and he needs to get out. And he's like, oh, well, what about XT-10101? I'm like, oh, you know about that. And it's like a missile they launch out of the sub that turns into, like, a, like a jet sort of thing. Oh, that sounds like a what Roger Moore era uh, early early uh, or 70s it may have been uh, never say never again one of the pseudo oh, James yeah, Bond yeah, movies. Oh yeah 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 mm. yeah. Anyhow, okay. I want you to imagine. Okay. That you're like, oh no, I need to be over there. I gotta get me a mash. <laughs> and they're like, well, there's this option. We need somebody to test it. Do you want to test it? I mean, does it get me over to the boat that has the better buffet? Yes. Get you, get you your bangers and your mash and your, mash. And your I think, HP I think you repeat yourself, my friend, because uh, the answer yeah. is yes. You want to see yourself in action then? Yes, I do. <laughs> okay. Do -do 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 -do. Uh, trial number one. R what the heck? <laughs> oh, my God. Somebody is full on jetpacking over to get the bangers and mash. This is amazing. <laughs> So this is one of the jet suits where you have the turbines on the arms and the backpack. And so we watched a guy take off from a small boat and now he's landing on another boat. So this is sort of a proof of concept. They want to test to see if one of these jetpack systems is usable for this. Now he's taking off oh my like, God. What? no bangers and mash. I'm heading back over to my dinghy. <laughs> So um, he's not on a wire, is he? No, no. It no. looks like it, though. That's how good it is. Yeah. So, so here's my question. Is there some amount of, of AI auto correction to, uh, to um, uh, uh, like, like uh, for example, when you set up autopilot on various cars, uh, you would know more about this than I would, Andrew. Uh, like, like, basically, it knows when you're in a lane and it can feel you indicating you want to move to another Three. lane. And then it three gets people at once. And then it gets These are like super villains attacking a boat. And then it gets you in that lane, and then you're kind of in that groove. Is there any computer assistance, or is this totally just just skill based? Like you better it's be an expert skill. skate it's skateboarder. Skill. Back up and watch this, Brian. Now imagine this no, is no, a I, SEAL I, I'm team seeing it. I'm just a... this is why it's hard Describe for me to it believe. Describe it to our audience. It's uh, our okay. podcast listeners. Um, 
there are three Tony Starks about to bully a PT boat is what it looks like. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, it's remarkable. It, it looks exactly how you would imagine. Imagine, imagine your fists instead of giant claws are, 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 are jet turbine engines. And, um, and, and, and I mean, it's three Iron Men. I, 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 don't, I don't know how else to say it. And they hover, they, they like hover around the boat too. So they're kind of encircling it in sort of a, 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 a death stranding sort of ominous just people kind of ragdolling and floating out uh, away from the boat oh my god it's I, terrifying. I, have, I have a better metaphor a andrew uh, I, i'm thinking of the uh, uh the segue you know how the segue mm -hmm. is pretty good at like it does the count the thing that you have a hard time wrapping your ma mind around which is two wheels or in some cases one wheel just sort of balancing on its own or whatever mm -hmm. like is there some amount of that no, happening no there's nothing it is all skill it is all skill it is turbines Turbines on your hands and then a turbine on your back. That is, these guys are skilled. They're trying to do it. You know, the ones where they talk about building the jet bikes and stuff, that will probably have that tech. This is literally these guys learning how to balance this That's stuff. That's so but, cool. And, and what we saw there, which is, this is, this is gravity. The, the company that's building these things. What we saw, which I assume is probably like, Hey, British special forces. How would you like to be able to do this? The Daedalus Mark one uh, jet suit. So uh, I'm going to assume it's running on, uh, I think we talked about something similar a week or two ago, and we, we found out that it was running on kerosene on jet f fuel. So I assume this, yeah, this is more of the fuel, same. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's incredible. So um, how long, do, or, or maybe, maybe, maybe I'm proposing a wrong thesis, I would imagine that as this would grow, you would make it easier and easier to pilot so it would become more and more computer-assisted uh but but or do you think this is forever the domain of 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 you know the 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 wakeboarder the barefoot water skier the wake surfer the you know the sporting enthusiast well i i think that the problem with this for the average person is that because you have these things attached to your arms which you're sort of going to flail a average person would flail about with it's not going to be where an average person want to do it but if you built all of it into a unit that can compensate and adjust for it like you talked about like how the Segway works and self-driving cars work, that's a different matter. Like, yeah, I think that could be a, a thing where eventually a person could, an average person could go use, you know, think of like, you know, ski doos and jet, you know, jet yeah, skis yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, right. Like, like um, uh, for example, and actually jet skis is not a bad example. When I was five to seven years old, I remember my dad had a, a, a pair of jet skis and these are the old ones that you had to stand in the back. You would lift up the thing and you would sort of do this balancing act while you were standing on. Um, those were definitely supplanted by the ski doos, which is much easier to, you know, ride upon like a motorcycle. Um, I, I would imagine that we might be over the next 10, 20 years seeing a similar thing happen when it comes to flying jet turbine things. This is a real conversation we're having about how these are going to come to market and be safe for the masses to use. This is incredible. Yeah. These are these are very very cool, but like what we're looking at here, these are you know you have to be experienced to be able to fly, but you can do it in five to ten minutes of flight time. You know, there's going to be ways to get improved efficiency out of that at some point, not a tremendous amount. I mean, you can spreadsheet to figure out the max amount of lift you'll ever be able to get out of, but still, very 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 cool. And, well, and you know, he and, showed we're looking at the prototype, and it's a mop bucket with fuel, <laughs> <laughs> and he's had the turbine attached to his hand. And it'd be while you're seeing like 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 corn grass being blown over across the other side of a highway. <laughs> it's crazy. Incredible. They're doing like l short jumps and little hops. It's almost like it's, oh, it's it's, it's like moon boots. Like almost. the montage from Iron Man One, where he's learning sure. how to how to uh, fly using the repulsor lifts. Wow, God, is yeah. that cool? Um. Yeah. It does look like he's tethered in these test flights, but uh, but certainly not flying around that friggin' boat. That's incredible. Yeah, pretty pretty amazing, pretty amazing. So, uh, uh, somebody sent us a link, Bryce. So apparently, uh, this looks like we we you know maybe evidence of a jet person caught in the act at an airport, and maybe been doing it with permission. We don't know. Uh, Could be fake. Who knows? Yeah, I uh, saw this on uh, Reddit today. Um, is this, what is that dude? That's definitely, okay. What, uh, crazy, right? okay. 
is this is what this do you see more recent than the story that we covered because we talked about uh, uh some some uh, uh aircraft pilots who were radioing saying like yeah it looks like a dude on a jetpack anyway flying to tokyo so this was posted i found this on reddit's uh wtf uh, uh subreddit this was posted well, one hour ago um Hopefully it's not a repost, but I know that with that story having broken weeks ago, I haven't seen any I mean, of this somebody, footage before. If somebody's now. making a habit of flying around airports in a jetpack, then it makes sense that uh, first you would hear about it from an eyewitness account from a pilot, then later you would get somebody who happened to catch it on video. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's the weird part is even if this is a fake, certainly the sentiment or the implication that somebody's flying around a jetpack around an airport uh is well established and i'll i'll throw a hypothesis out there too that not to say this is what i think is taking place but there have been cases where you know pilots have said oh we see a strange light formation out there that's behaving in a different path we see something strange if it's the military testing a secret craft or whatever like this they have their own authorization can use whatever quarters they need to as long as they're not interfering with civilian stuff there will be no, we don't know. You're never going to get, you're not, rarely would you ever get, in some cases rather, you'll never, you won't get like, oh yeah, they, they were testing something because it's secret and you don't want to acknowledge it was tested or how often it gets tested. And you don't want, you know, the other sides to hear like, oh, well, you know, Tuesday they test this. So every three weeks we think they're ready to go do another test on this stuff. And that's why a lot of those things never got explained. There was an explanation, but it, it just wasn't was never going to be released. Right. Yeah. Well, exactly. And, and, and also, as we talked about with uh, Project Bluebird and the military silence for most of the Cold War era, where Blue like Book. it was more tactically valuable to let the Russians believe that maybe we do have alien technology. Maybe the uh, uh, flying saucer did crash, and that's how we're awesome. Yeah, whatever can distract from... Eh, it's a big mylar balloon. Right. <laughs> like, that's not as cool. Oh, so maybe uh, this is maybe this is like a, the false flag. We're supposed to focus on the jetpacks at LAX and not not see the weather balloons over at SFO. N no, it's a I mean it might technique. literally be. Right. No, I mean, I, no, I mean, what I mean is it literally might be like they might be doing some authorized sort of testing for a government you know, for the government or air force or something like this, right, in which case, but it's uh, not any, any discussion about it would be met with radio silence per, per policy. Yeah. 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 So, um, okay, uh, man, I don't, part of me just wants to retread our discussion about what's the coolest way to fly. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be terrified of doing a full on jetpack thing that, that short, Time limit really freaks me out. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know what? I, I did see a headline, and forgive me if I'm taking us awry, but um, uh, uh, this is not even a real news story. This is a headline I saw this morning <laughs> was talking about um, uh, 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 some aircraft company. I want to say it's Boeing uh, talking about a, a hydrogen powered zero emissions uh, uh, jet vehicle, uh, which that solves a bunch of things because we've talked about the idea of going up on anything that was battery powered was a little bit terrifying because what happens when you run out of battery? Uh, whereas um, hydrogen is a little bit of sort of a money laundering green operation in that um, you have to make, you have to create energy to make the hydrogen uh, by, uh, I wanted to say dialysis. Uh, uh, what am I, what's the word I've tried to think of? Uh, Oh, uh, uh, oh, um, die, die, suffer other when, when, when you take two electrodes and put it in salt water and you get the bubbles. Oh, LaCroix. Uh, oh, hydrolysis. I uh, hydrolysis? Man? I do not know. Okay. We'll, yes, we'll say that. Hydrolysis. Uh, 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 <laughs> dialysis. Um, but the, uh, but, but so, um, uh, you know, maybe that energy comes from coal. Maybe it comes from nuclear. Maybe it comes from whatever. But, uh, the point is you have a tank with a known quantity of hydrogen and you have an exchange rate through a fuel cell to exchange that much hydrogen into um, uh, electricity. And all of a sudden to, to my uneducated mind, everything becomes a little bit safer. Does, does any of that track with you guys? Like I've, for some reason I trust a tank of hydrogen more than I trust a battery. I'm opposite on where I trust, but your energy density in hydrogen is going to be much greater. And that that's why, if you're just pure safety, the, because the energy density is greater, it means the potential for explosions greater, but it also means as something you'd use in an aircraft might be better. Um, so I wouldn't, hydrogen also is le very leaky. It's very hard to contain. 
which is why I don't really think it's a practical solution for cars. But for airplanes, like that that case where you're going from airport to airport, which can have a large hydrogen facility and can put this into aircraft or whatever. Um, yeah, you know, I think that that's, you know, a, a viable place to get it. Um, so uh, I have, yeah, the, the advantage for aircraft, like I said, is the energy density is what you're, you know, if, if you have a 20, you know, if you have 20 kilograms of payload, you're going to be better off with hydrogen than even the most of that advanced battery. BioCow linked us to an article on electrolysis, which was the word I was trying yeah. to access. Uh, okay. but uh, the, the, uh, the news report you might have been looking at, Brian, may have been about the Zero Avia. I, I saw a CNN article very recently ah. about this with a, a mixture of a hydrogen tank and a fuel cell uh, for a zero emissions uh, uh Jetliner. It also looks like Airbus, I believe, um, has a hydrogen power uh, thing in in the works. The Zero E, a kind of winged. That is aircraft. that is sort of a uh, a PR coup in that that's one of the traditional tropes that people who you know uh, anybody who uh, has made a brand for themselves about zero emissions and a carbon footprint and all that. It's it's a popular thing to say like you burn more carbon on your way out here on a jetliner or whatever, and uh, so it seems like there's significant uh, uh, motivation to to have some kind of zero carbon footprint uh, vehicle. Yeah, over time, and also if you if you follow the trend line for the last two hundred years of how we generate energy, the the energy is in like. Your like your hydrogen bonds. That's where the energy comes from. Like your hydrogen, the closer you get to that, the better. Like uh, carbon, etc. And so we use fuels that are more hydrogen rich, rich as we go along. So the more hydrogen rich the fuel is, the better. And eventually, you know, you get to a point where you're just going to use straight up hydrogen, ideally, or just you know, electricity and a battery to contain it. Uh, and this is a great quote. Yeah, Jerry Purnell says you're talking about how uh, hydrogen loves to leak. There are no hydrogen wells. So, um, yeah, uh, nuclear power plants do not produce a lot of hydrogen. Um, they produce some hydrogen, but not a lot. The hydrogen you get is going to be from your fusile material, and it's going to be insignificant compared to what you can get from, you know, extraction from other means. Um, but although, although I uh, suppose, um, uh, if, if the fringe research is to be believed, uh, you know, what is it? We've been on the cusp of, uh, uh, fusion. Uh, reactors for 50 years now uh, uh, but but uh, latest article I read said you know something like an 8 to 10 return on investment for power and once you have that much power then all of a sudden you can do electrolysis and all of a sudden you can make an awful lot of hydrogen uh, that's that's used mm -hmm. to power your fusion thing and, and so on. chat room points out the hydrogen embrittlement and that's start part of the problem is because your containers and stuff that try to contain it hydrogen is hydrogen is not like it is it is the smallest atom and it's, it gets it's into places it's the sneakiest yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, and it's, it's like not Manhattan rats. Yeah. But who knows where we'll go. You know, a lot of options. I think our energy futures can involve in several things. But yeah, hydrogen for an airplane, like that's a, like I'd say that's a potential case where it makes sense because of, you know, trying to put hydrogen to every single gas station or anything like it's ridiculous. Why? When you've got batteries that are, you know, we're getting close to thousand mile batteries. So what advantage will hydrogen give us other than really, really expensive infrastructure and something you can't charge at home? Have have we, I think, I feel like it's been over a year or two since we last heard about the idea of swapping out uh, full batteries. The idea of, like you would pull into a service station and rather than charging your batteries, they would just pull out your drain battery and pop in a new one. Is that a case where um until funding happens we're probably not going to hear more about that or or was it an inherently bad idea or 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 maybe maybe it's just between investment cycles i don't know i wonder if if um, you have enough standardized if you would be able to have standardized batteries to do that between different manufacturers well, you would, and all that stuff yeah i mean yeah i mean you would just do it within because part of the tech the secret to each sort of company is going to be their own battery tech uh Tesla had originally built uh, at a demonstration of how to pull a battery out of the underneath of the undercarriage and then replace it, which was probably part of trying to meet some sort of California incentive or whatever like that. Now, as somebody just points out in the chat room, like they're building them as part of the chassis now that their next generation battery tech, it's going to be part of the underframe. So you're not really going to try to swap that out. But also, we've been finding that the batteries, like car batteries, have actually lived a lot, have a lot more longevity than we expected. 
So, you know, you're in a position where, you know, 10 years from now, when maybe it's time to replace the battery, it's like, well, let's get a new car and just take apart that car and, or whatever, you know. Can I ask a personal question about um, um, how long does the excitement aura around owning a Tesla last? Because I like, do you still get giddy? Oh, yes. Okay. I figured that was, the oh, yeah. yeah, no, it is. It is every time I get in there, you're just, it's just, and they do the little updates and stuff too, but it's just, I, it, the thing is, is like, you might get kind of used to it and then you have to, then you go ride in a, a regular car and they're, I mean, that a regular cars are amazing. There's amazing stuff in there. So a normal build, civic car, car, one of those the normal car cars, gas, what, <laughs> but it's just, but partially with the self-driving and stuff too, is that's the thing too, is you might be on a highway and you're like, if I'm in a rental car, I'm like, Oh, let me, Oh, Oh. Oh, you know, and maybe I get into a nice car that's got like a, a lane assist or something like that. But um, mm -hmm. it's just, it's just, you know, the, the thing that I don't think, I think part of why we've seen a lot more, you know, Tesla stocks gone up, it could be hype, could be whatever. But two is that like, if you talk to Tesla owners, that's like their next car is going to be an electric, you know? Right. They're already kind of on that track and they probably won't yeah. go back. Yeah. So just a question people brought in there, like, what if you you have the battery in the chassis and what if the battery goes bad or whatever? Well, part of it is you try to build for redundancy and you, you know, what if you have, you know, what if your car is, you know, what if you have a car that's got a bad, you know, axle? What if you have this? What are these other, you know, what if there's, there's, you could say this, the goal is to get the defect rate down so low, you don't, doesn't matter that your chances of having that problem is easily remedied. Yeah, but it's different. It's a very different way of looking at things. And those, you know, you know those the the electric cars, those have you know fewer moving parts, right? You would think that the I don't know the repair cost it w that you kind of shave off by having not having a combustion engine, you can offset by okay, well if they make it a little harder to get at the at the battery, there's a more there's a longer parts and there's a longer labor time to get to it or or whatever. Like there's I, still an offset there. I feel like. I've had my car three years. I put air in the tires. Yeah. Two years, two and a half. I put air in my tires. That's what I do. That's all I do. It's put air. Oh yeah, because you don't have to do oil. Oh my gosh! No, wow. No. Yep. Or or uh, uh, I mean, uh, I I believe it was a Consumer Reports thing that recently, I want to say two months ago or whatever, came out with a uh, yeah, dude, electric cars they last a really really long time with very little maintenance cost, and I I want to say their savings I'm totally making up this number, but it was like a thousand to two thousand dollars per year of maintenance stuff you just don't have to do uh, over the I, lifetime yeah. of the car. Yeah, I had a Toyota before which I loved and I thought was pretty dependable and. But this, like, I literally, the only thing I worry about is just putting my, keeping, make sure my air has tire, my tire has airs. And that's it. And, but, you know, and there, again, it's like, you know, it's a high tech car. And, you know, the first, the first year that the Model 3 came out, there are people with problems and stuff and fit and finish. And, you know, you're not going to escape physics and not going to escape, you know, production, things like that. But, the, you know, I, when I got mine, has been great. Cool. So, uh, yeah. That was, I remember it's like the last conversation I had with my mechanic as I went to go have my car fixed, my old Toyota fixed. And then, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to go get a Tesla and the look on his face. And I'm like, it's like, you just told like, you know, a girl that liked you that you're moving to a new town. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to move to this new town. And he's like, oh, we can still lubricate the chassis. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Like, let yeah. me know if you want to come by for a car wash. Uh, if your cup oh, holder breaks, like, if your cup holder breaks, they could go fix it. Probably they can order you a new cup holder. Well, I would just, so that's the thing with Tesla is like, it's like kind of like they do with some like BMW or Mercedes. Like you just, you pull out your phone. If something's broken, you press a button and then you just order service and they send somebody out to where you live to fix it. If mm. It's fixable that way. Fancy. So crazy. Yeah. Cool. Gentlemen, picks. Yeah, man. Um, wait, now, um, uh, I'm kind of torn uh, between two things. Um, I'll, I'll go with the one that I, I know for sure I liked a lot, uh, and I'm only three episodes into it, but uh, me and the family are finally watching The Queen's Gambit on uh, Netflix. Mm. Oh, you guys are liking that? Um, loving it. I, I, have you watched any? No, but I've seen it be like the biggest thing on Netflix right now. Um, yeah, I, 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 I look forward to finding out why it's the biggest thing <laughs> on Netflix because um, um, 
they very deliberately shoot uh, the story again, three episodes in. So I got time here. Um, the opening scene, uh, spoiler alert for the first five minutes is uh, uh, somebody, some, uh, 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 our female protagonist is in uh, France, 1967. She uh, wakes up, bursts out of a bath is clearly not in a great space. There's a, a partner in the bed who's still asleep. She uh, uh, slams a couple of tranquilizers and a, 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 a hotel little thing of vodka or whatever, walks it, composes herself, opens the door, flash bulbs go off. She shows up late for what appears to be some kind of championship chess game uh, and then flashes back to... Uh, again, now we're at spoilers for the first seven minutes. Uh, the uh, uh, the moment that her mom died in a car crash and she went into an orphanage. So you spend the first couple of episodes with her as an orphan, and then you follow her as as her life evolves from there. She's a gifted prodigy when it comes to uh, chess. Um, it's really interesting as somebody who really digs the game of chess, who back in high school read uh, uh, three or four books on the subject and and joined the U.S. Chess Federation and stuff. Uh, the chessboard is almost perpetually mostly off the screen, just barely visible off to the side. But the the pedant, uh, pen, pe yeah, pedant? In, in, pedant in me uh -huh. uh, is constantly looking to verify that they're not messing around on the moves they're making and the, the setups that they have. Mm -hmm. And you could kind of tell like, okay, that's a legit thing. Um, uh, you could tell I, 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 it's, it's a fine love letter to the game of chess. Uh, it's a, it looks to be a really interesting character study of, of, of somebody who's, um, extraordinarily gifted and, um, develops a habit of, of, you know, dealing with, with, uh, either, I don't know how you would phrase it, uh, mental illness or, uh, as they, as they call it in, in, uh, other circles, twice gifted, you know, uh, being burdened by her own intellect. Um, I, I I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Whole family, this is, this whole is fiction. watching it. Yeah. Right, this yeah. is not a re like a, a retelling or a fictional. Yeah, not based a... on a true story as far as I could tell, but, <laughs> uh, but, but, uh, watching it with the whole fam, uh, our seven year olds, not interested, but, uh, but our, our really? 12, 12 year old, 16 year old, uh, uh, Bonnie and me, uh, having a really good time. And nice. there are brief nods to what, what the social scene looked like in the 1960s and, um, uh, yeah, you know, her high school friends, even as she's a prodigy and is, you know, winning all these championships or whatever, like they know she's famous, but they don't know what they can get out of her. And, and suddenly she feels alone when they're all singing along to a Frankie Valley song or whatever. Um, it's, uh, I, I, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. It is stylish as hell from everything I hear. It, it, it sounds an awful lot like what people really like about the marvelous Miss Maisel, where it's like, there's this one unbroken shot midway through episode three that, uh, there's like four different scenes and I know they're all blended together digitally or whatever, but I'm like, I don't know where you go to get that building to look like it's Las Vegas, 1967. And I'm pretty sure those aren't computer generated backgrounds, backgrounds, uh, stairs, uh, you know, everything like it, okay. it it's a very expensive and lush looking presentation. Hmm. Cool. Queen's Gambit. Uh, and that's Netflix, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I've got a pick. Um, over the uh, over last week, I was talking to someone who uh, was telling me about this game that I already know it's art, it's out, and it's great, and everybody loves it. And um, but it's a type of game that I don't normally play a lot of. It's a roguelike game, so you know you play it until you can get as far as you can go, and then uh, you die and you start all over. But then the more you play it over and over again, you get better. Uh, so the, uh, but I, I, I managed to spend a little bit of time this weekend with, uh, Hades over the weekend and man, this, this thing is really cool. Um, so this is from super giant games. They did, uh, bastion, uh, they've done, um, what is it? Transistor, I believe was one of their other big games. Uh, and so it's super stylish. It's very colorful and, and it has this, this really cool aesthetic. And the idea is that you are, um, Zagreus, the the prince of Hades, the son of son of Hades, and you are trying to, uh, or sorry, of um, uh, the god of the underworld, whoever that. Yeah, is. yeah, that's uh, Hades. Oh, okay, yeah. No, no, sorry, Hades is the land. Uh, the god. Uh, well, now now you messed me up. It's not Odin. Uh, it, it does. No, not Zeus. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, so you're trying to escape Hades, 
um, where you're, that your that your father rules, and uh, each time you try to go, so you're you're navigating through the different levels of 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 hell from Tartarus to uh, the lava area to like Elysium, and um, along the way you're getting blessings from the from the Olympian gods and um, from the, uh, k- the the underworld gods and and uh, it, it's it's really interesting. I think the the really interesting about it beyond the gameplay stuff, which is 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 very good, um, is it's really telling the story uh, as just as it's happening. It, it's it's a, it does a really good job of not st- sitting you down and saying like. Okay, you are Zagreus. This is your issue with your father, and right. here are all like you just start off and you just play. And as you go through, there's a lot of written dialogue, a lot of recorded voice dialogue that gives you bits and bits of like, why are you doing this? What really is going to happen if you do this? What is everyone's relation? Um, In terms of mechanics, it, it looks like it's got a three quarters view. It reminds me a little bit of the Diablo franchise. What would it, uh, my friend, my friend derisively calls all these games and with affection, uh, monster pinata. Is it the type of thing where you bust open a bad guy and then loot falls out and then you go on to the next bad guy? No, this is more uh, actiony, more hack and slashy. So you're not really waiting for like a buff, for buffs and stuff. You're you're. Uh, you're 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 walking around and dashing and and uh, trying to time it right. But 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 is there is there things to place on a rag doll or uh, on a body doll of like give me this shield and now I've got more of this? No, uh, okay. no. You you have uh, you pick a weapon at the start. So there's like eight different weapons you can choose from. So the sword and spear and uh, there's a gun you get at some point. And uh, so those all have their own move sets. And as you're as you're going through the buffs that they give you the um, the boons. From the different gods say like okay hey this will give you more attack or when you attack you'll give them this status effect um and so uh the the actual g- uh, gameplay loop of attacking and stuff is the same but you get those buffs on top of it um but i i just think it's really stylish and it's and it's really interesting um because when you die you know you go back to the house of hades and you you see your father there all all the time and all of the other people who occupy the house and everyone knows that you're trying to escape and no one like really cares. So it's like 2020 the game. Yeah, <laughs> you're trapped at home with dad and you're <laughs> trying to get the hell out. Um, and supposedly the you know there's a there's a lot more story stuff going on. I think um, the thing that I always bounce off with roguelike games is that I just don't ever get good at them. <laughs> you know, uh, what is interesting about Hades is they have a god mode uh where they give you damage resistance and the more you lose the more you get that damage resistant buff so you start off with like 20 percent, and every time you die it goes up two percent i don't know what the max is but even if it's like 50 percent, that that extends your gameplay a long time because i think you get the sense that it actually does want you to finish and get to the credits because you know, it, it doesn't just end. Oh, that's when you... interesting. So, like, if you told me every time you die, we're going to make the game easier for you, I would be mad. But if mm-hmm. you told me every time I die, I'm going to come back tougher. Just a little e- bit tougher. Even though that's technically the exact same thing, <laughs> somehow I feel cool with it. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a Rogue Legacy, which is uh, another big roguelike game that I could never get into just because I couldn't, I couldn't get good at it. I feel like I couldn't get good at it, where Hades feels like it's structured for you to figure out everything that's going on and and see the narrative that there's a really strong clear narrative there and, and you get to see all so I, i'm excited for it um uh i see what everyone's talking about in terms of maybe game of the year status so wow uh the tatis it's on it's only on the pc and the switch right now but i'm sure it's going to come to consoles and stuff andrew what do you got i have a little pick it's a uh a- TV series. It's entering into its second season. I don't know if you've heard of this called The Mandalorian. <laughs> oh, I have heard of this. Um, uh, uh, gently dancing around spoilers. What did you think of the character that we met this week? <laughs> so, uh, uh, so you all watched it, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, I'll just talk about in general, like, I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. And, you know, I get that not everybody gets to watch things, you know, right when they come out. Um, what I loved is I, th- there's still a, like, it was a longer episode, which, which is good, but the longer episodes often there's a pacing sort of thing. And that was, this felt like 
there's this this sort of pacing kind of thing and kind of the dialogue is a little comic book kind of thing which and i loved it let me make that very clear i loved it and and you know my my my, my issue with the kind of like last season was there are some shows and episodes that were great and other episodes i'm like i want people to go back and look at the lens of like when it's really good what it does and then look at these and tell me like do, do you think that that was as tight of the way they could have told that story here i liked it i think it had some of the same sort of like uh length issues or things or there could have been could have been tighter or there could have been more going on in a thing but overall i mean i love the show and if the production values are insane are insane like what we saw was incredible you know and and i would say from a storytelling thing it is a very linear show and it is like we're gonna go do blank and you know blank's gonna happen and then that would this was an episode of like really weird that they're trying to do this instead of doing that this is blank and then you get to like well now we're going to try to do blank this way and you're like oh, okay got it so we spent 15 minutes here although we were going to get to where we we're going to go initially if you know what i'm talking about yeah and 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 i trust uh you andrew i trust you bryce to believe me when i say that i say this without any indication that i'm not loving the series and i'm not pleased and i'm not happy that i watched it mm -hmm. this episode a uh, bit of a sillier start to season 2 than i expected Seemed kind of silly. I, uh, uh, so I did not watch season one and probably won't watch season two, but I'm looking at the Wikipedia for the plot and there's some words in here that I don't, did not know were in Star Wars. Uh, specifically one that starts with a D. Uh, I did not know they had those in this, uh, wait, uh, in this so, sorry. I'm, I'm thinking of all the things that are inappropriate for Star Wars. Rawr. It's a, a, a dog. Can I say it? I don't yeah. know if it's. A, I didn't know there were dragons in, in Star oh, Wars. Oh well, I mean, oh, it's, a, it's put put air quotes around it. It's what the locals call. Um, as a matter of fact, um, uh, in the uh, uh, in the dragon. original Star Wars: A New Hope, the very first episode, uh, uh, Obi Wan's entrance is heralded by this loud growling sound that uh, that he said that that in in canon is him imitating the call of the crate dragon to scare yeah. off the um not their word sand people the tuscan raiders <laughs> not their people <laughs> so that was that was a thing that kind of that there are sand people in this episode and tuscan i will raiders. say that <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> definitely not native americans definitely they're not, not cowboys tuscan, they're not all tuscan raiders just so you know <laughs> okay, either, good okay? Point. You're, some you're of them are tuscan trying... homemakers tuscan podcasters yeah. <laughs> tuscan gatherers so i they're, they're like listening to their scenes where you're listening to them talk and it goes on and on and it is a grating not a fun experience where you're like i get it they sound horrible. To hearing that language, hearing a conversation in there, I'm like, this could be five minutes shorter, and we get it. You know, wow. there's there's some there's a lot of little bits of that in Mandalorian. A lot of like, this is a little bit too long. We get the point. I'm not having fun. I don't. I don't. Werner Herzog is not directing this as a documentary. So, wait, uh, he yeah. was the director on this one? No, 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 John no, no. I'm saying oh, no. John yeah. Favreau. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah saying, I was like, about to say, it, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah no. To be honest, I was a bit surprised that John Favreau was the director of this one, just because of of like there was an economy to the first episode, uh, which I believe he also directed of season one. That, that it was David I, Filoni I, did the Filoni. first one. Oh, was it? He oh, didn't wow. direct any. Yeah. Uh, John Favreau didn't oh, direct I take, any. I take all that back because then. of the light. Um, yeah. yeah. Today I learned. Um, yeah, there, there there are delightful moments that I liked quite a bit about this episode. In general, bit long, bit fatty, bit silly. Is Baby Yoda still in it? Yeah. Still got that little rat in there? Yeah, dude. If you want to see yeah. him constantly closing up his clamshell to hide, mm -hmm. boy, do I have the episode for you. <laughs> I'm the Baby Yoda actor. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. okay. <laughs> uh, I begin. I love it. I'm very happy with it. It is. It is. It the. I always thought it was tedious whenever people say, oh, we should just shut this franchise down for a while. It's like, the problem ain't the franchise. The problem is the decisions being made about it. You know, if like, you're like, like, imagine Mandalorian didn't exist and we ended with episode nine. People would be going, ah, it's Star Wars. It's just, it's done out. You know, that's the problem. And because Mandalorian launched before episode nine, we're like, nope. Problem is clearly not Star Wars. Right, 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 the, right. The problem is the stories that we are choosing to tell. Because straight up, yeah. uh, look, Mandalorian makes no bones about it, as best I could tell. It's uh, uh if you want to know how your parents felt about spaghetti westerns in the 1950s, and and you know, uh, watching. Uh, I, I just realized I can't 
tell you any of the names of the Cowboys and Indian stuff. All the tropes, all the tropes, all the structure, all the done and done again a million times stories are there. They're just really good, really well told. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, somebody says, love the Mandalorian, but it does feel like a minimal, minimalist version of The Witcher. I think Witcher's a better show. Wow. Ooh, uh, that actually really big. makes me want to watch The Witcher now. Wow. You, you haven't seen The Witcher? No, because because I heard I heard it was a, I heard it was a little bit over the top CW at times, and so I didn't quite. I was waiting um, to hear more. Not enough to annoy me, and I am the one that will scream CW CW CW. I yeah. really like The Witcher. I don't want to oversell it to you, but just okay. if you want to go watch a, think back when your nerd friends were thinking about talking about D and D role games and the 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 think back think of like you're going to pick up a really good elf quest novel or or a witcher novel really you're going to just have a fun experience with the story um it's the non-linearity of which things are told there's a little out of sequency thing it doesn't need to do it which is annoying but once you get to win once you get okay i get the context i really really like i don't know anybody who's watched the witcher and wasn't like oh this is didn't think it was wonderful wow Maybe maybe that's one I'll here. try to get my my sixteen year old daughter into because she if if she, she's in a D and D right uh, well well if she taps out it's because she takes her fantasy so seriously that she's like yeah I don't think they're taking this serious enough and and it sounds yeah. like The Witcher has a deep and rich enough back oh, lore yeah it's it's good and you saw that uh, one of our commenters said love The Witcher more than me like I would like I I love I love Mandalorian I love Star Wars. But for tight storytelling and, and working at the medium that I never a storytelling that I was not familiar with, uh, loved Witcher. And and I would say like people said producers said make it more Game of Thrones. No, it wasn't the producers telling them to make it more. It was more Netflix telling them to do it, but without giving them Game of Thrones level money. Because um, there are scenes that you feel like if this were Game of Thrones, there'd be thirty times as many people here. But mm -hmm. Witcher is really good, good questing kind of great sort of story. Again, tallies are says it so what more can i say there you go yeah okay. so uh gentlemen toss a coin to your mandalorian <laughs> it's Ow. been weird Tink. hey there we go that's some weird things i gotta us. run i cannot do after things so. uh, okay yeah, you know what um um if you can bow out for today yeah yeah i think we'll skip after things this week um okay no worries uh good 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 to hang out andrew good stuff everybody uh yeah that'll let me get ahead on some of the work i gotta do for cord killers uh brian and justin will be doing happy hour today um as far correct? as i know okay. um uh, i guess maybe you should text him yeah that'll that'll be uh, figured out so if they don't do a happy hour today they're you might not want to get one until the end of the week but yeah uh just adds up on that uh cord killers coming up at uh six central we got andy beach on He's yeah be that'll great. be a good one it's been a minute it has been uh and then night attack is moved to wednesday it'll be a normal time but a different day it's on wednesday blame your new president who i assume will be one of the two people running for president well only one of them could be a new president i guess <laughs> who knows all right everybody uh, have a good rest of your Monday. Bye.